head. How did it feel to actually record your first real album since practice was a demo that turned into an album? It felt very nice, and uh, I think we got much better sounds, and it was done much more professionally. Thick. <laughs> Fire the video. Wait, man. Okay, how much how much did I rest get involved in the making of the album? the marketing of the band, what's this grand slam? Well, grand slam and IRS both are in charge of marketing and everything. The band's really totally in charge of the recording, the band and the management. You know, the recording, most of the mixes we're, you know, heavily involved in. So after that, of course, they don't want to the marketing. And since it's their money anyway, they don't want to make a lot of final decisions. But we have an input into everything. Yeah. Don't make noise before. If there's something that, you know, we hate, Obviously, we're not like, oh, okay, sure, we'll do it. We're like, you know, we hate that. Can we do something else? You know, they're usually pretty receptive to it. Now, what's the concept of the cover and the album itself? Um, In the Know is a song we had before we did preface. And uh, what we did was we were driving around Florida playing shows and wondering what we're going to do with the second record. And we said, well, are any of the song titles strong enough to stand alone as, you know, an album title? And uh, In the Know, I think, was something that we kind of felt was in touch because you know obviously what in the know means, right? The phrase if someone's in the know they're aware of what's yeah. you know discussing around. And uh, we wanted to use the same artist we used with the first record cover, we chose the same kid. And uh, the artist actually came up with a lot of the, the design of the cover and stuff. You know, we wanted there to be separation, color, the kid in color and the class from the other children in black and white. It's purely sexual. But, yeah, it's really a, a sexual thing. The same below the same sphere from the first record going on there. There's a lot of things. I mean, there's like a little preface. If you notice, one of the girls has a book on her desk and it's a preface album cover and CD. Right, yeah. yeah. It's real small, obviously. You can barely see it on the tape, and it's real small the CD, too, but it's there. So is that answer the question? Is there, yeah. Is, it, is there a concept to the album? Are the songs tied together? It's not like a concept album at all, no. Okay, what's the meaning of the intro? What presence and who is it? That's my grandfather. Did you know that or no? You're actually asking that question. You've been asking me to ask my question. You've been asking everybody to ask that question. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's actually my grandfather. In 1958, he put out a record. It's a lady, obviously, singing, but he's playing the accordion and he wrote the song. And it just sounded, um, it sounded cool, like, you know, going from my grandfather to, like, you know, playing whatever kind of music that is. something really happy. So, <laughs> okay. Alan, why do you change the lyrics to practice? Um, we always did that before we recorded it. Like, I never had something set to say. It was just a big fat riff we used to open the song and set. It. And uh, I mean, it's the lyrics have changed from us being really pissed off at a club owner or a promoter or a sound man or a band that played before the us. The weather, for instance. You know, we just changed the words to reflect the anger of the day, really. It's kind of like a theme song. It's rain! Kevin. Yes? How much did the song change from the time you wrote until the time you recorded it? Uh, not very much at all, I don't think. We um, Usually what we do is uh, we'll write something, you know, and it's mainly between the four band members, and usually 99% of the time it just stays the same from the time it's written until the time it's recorded. But some of the songs, on the record were written before I was even in the band. Yeah. Some were written right when I joined. Some were written immediately, maybe four weeks before the record was uh, actually recorded. So they pretty much stay the same from rehearsal to to record. Okay, what's the meaning of the most most difficult vocal parts to you? There's a lot of multiple vocal tracks on this album. Um. Live, a million years ago, Kevin sings the first one and I sing the other two ascending vocals. Um, I think the middle part of acceptance, that real swoopy thing, that was probably the most difficult thing to hold up on. How did you come about using a female background vocals next to nothing? That was Dan's idea. Dan? Yeah. I got a lot of fucking ideas. Um, <laughs> This, I heard in my head when I wrote, I wrote this song, we were supposed to start recording, I forget what the exact date was, like maybe April or something, and um, when the studio time got pushed back and I just started writing a, a chorus to that, I heard um, like, kind of almost like, 
I'm not sure this came out before or after, but the black crows with those two black girls in the background. I just love that. You know? So, I wanted to do that. How did you come up with the title for your acoustic piece? Well, there's no lyrics, so we had a bunch of uh, titles. We all used to joke around about it. We had some pretty good names for instrumental titles. We will not tell you because other bands would steal them. <laughs> we have some good ones. We've got to write some more instrumentals because they're really pretty clever. <laughs> Why did you choose not to use a rhythm guitar track behind your leads? That's not the well, thing. Did you ever hear of Richie Dabakia? He's a famous guitar player. Dabakia. Dabakia? That's the Braccio. The Braccio. Uh, the real reason why is because a lot of people want people to say, wow, they sounded better or as good as the record. And um, I hate when bands like have a rhythm guitar player, like, you know, they only have one guitar player, and the rhythm's like pounding over the lead. You can't even hear the bass in the live. It just sounds so damn empty when you get to that part. So I think it's really cool. It's kind of almost like non fiction. It's not, it's not a rhythm guitar behind my lead's live, so why do you on the record? Also, Kevin's bass sounds just, I think, so immense and real. It just Thank you. fills it right out. It's not like, it's on the album, even sometimes when they don't put rhythm tracks in, the bottom drops out, and I don't think that's the case at all in this record, unfortunately. Why, why'd you wait so long to have the peak for put on this album? We just held a couple of the songs over from, I mean, Peak was around before I was even in the band. And in the note was another older song, like I said, and we just couldn't put a million songs on preface and we wanted to hold some of our favorites over to the new record. And that was just one of them. Do you think anybody will be offended by your PS in the credits? PS? No, oh, what were we saying about go back to preface? Yeah, some people actually didn't understand what we were trying to say. We were trying to say it was special thanks for the two months we have both albums. So everybody should go buy this first album purely for the reason I'm looking at this first <laughs> album. Like, I thought it meant go back to the song text. No, no. That's a lot of people think. Really? Yeah. That's it. Really? I never, no, you see, we put, refer to the preface of this story. Yeah. We always said preface is like the beginning of our careers. And also preface in the special thanks is underlined to separate our name. There you go. Most people just aren't well said. said. <laughs> no, separate the song from the album, album title. Well, to clear up any further confusion, it's the record preface. And also, Richie, over here, we forgot to put typo negative and Blitzbeer in the special thanks, and we regret that. Did we type Biohazard? Yeah. And yeah, no. order? Yeah. Salutations to yeah. Andrew Blackman, our attorney, our, our, our accountant, who we also forgot to thank on the record. He'll yeah. be watching this video, I'm sure. <laughs> And how far do you plan to take this book concept? That's it. Oh, the book concept, who knows? But um, no more album covers like the little boy. Kevin's going to have it get castrated again. I can tell this idea. Again? Yeah, for the second time he's going to castrate it. Right, right. He's a eunuch. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it take so long to make a video for the first time? Mike, you want to answer that question? Since he makes it a different answer every time people ask him. Thank you for asking, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start off by saying that, no, uh, who knows, man, you know? It just wasn't a free answer. Yeah, I knew he was going to say that. We were talking about that. Who knows? I can ask yeah. Mike a question so he can say it. It wasn't originally in the budget, you know? And then, uh, that wasn't, didn't, then we got the tour support rather than uh, I got a video, but these college kids came along, we got a really good deal, and that was that. It was kind of like, we never even planned it, and then we just came along, one of those deals, you know? So why did it take so long to get out there? That's the question. So it took us that long to meet the freaking kid who shot it for us. <laughs> <laughs> We had a delay in the duping process. A friend was asked to dupe it instead of just the company that we went to. A manager was trying to do something else to save us some money. And you know, when you ask a friend to do something, sometimes they take a long time to do it, and you can't really be on their, their ass about it because they're doing you a favor. So what happened was it took forever to get done, and then we started doing the one for this record for Reason to Live, and it was so close, it's like, what do we do? Submit. The my way, and then cause further confusion by submitting one from this record, and just hold off on it, leave it like kind of a collector's item or whatever, and you know, just play it in our own music cars <laughs> and submit these in the lyrics. That's what we did. Mike, what's the video for the reason to live? It's cool. It's like more of a, uh, I don't know, concept video. I mean, it's not just us performing. It's like, got, it's kind of got a story behind it, but I want you to like the, the viewer to make their own conclusions. I'm not going to tell you what it's about, but. It's it's a real video. It's done by a professional video company, as opposed to college kids doing it. Yeah, we can play the model. Right, this doesn't seem like the hands in it. 
sort of plans do you have? Yeah. You've already said I'm passing to you today. It's like not worth talking about. So many things can change. The only thing that's down is we're playing the Light Light Sunday. We're playing Foundations for on October 2nd, so that's the only stuff we're talking about. October 16th is Studio One, just so you know. We've got bids in for a couple tours now, and they may pan out, they may not. If they don't, we're going to do our own stints to headlining clubs up and down the East Coast for now. Do a Texas run, or probably a Florida run. And um, God willing, we've got our open slots, so we're going to do right now. Okay, I have one last question. How do you feel about the possibility of being thrown in the spotlight all of a sudden, since it's happened quite a bit lately with all these major signing underground bands? Guys? Yeah. Well, I think, good. I would say we do look better in the dark. <laughs> but uh, what are you guys saying? Um, it's going to be a refreshing change of pace to be able to push people around and treat them like shit. No. <laughs> I don't think anything about that. I don't think anything about that. We'll probably be the same. Yeah, I mean, if we do happen to become real successful, it would be obviously amazing. And we'd probably look back on these times when it gets a little depressing and, and just be like, you know, man, if only we knew we were going to break like this. Yeah, do you think it affects like the natural progression of the band? I can see how it would happen to, to certain bands. I, I hope to God it wouldn't happen with us. I don't think it would because, I mean, Dan and I have been through a lot in the past putting out records and stuff. Kevin's been doing this for a long time too, with his band Valkyrie, I think he did everything. And um, Mike hasn't done anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta do my no, best. No, no. I think <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about is if we if we broke or something like that, is that it would actually delay the creative process and we wouldn't be able to put out records as quickly as we did say from preface to in the know, which is in less than a year by the way. So uh, hopefully we'll still be able to do a lot of releases. Pretty talented with a bunch of guys, huh? <laughs> Alright, that's all I have. Yeah, you have any Bye, Richie! Bye, Bye on record! Thanks for the interview, Chris! Bye, Art And now the My Way video. Right. <laughs> <laughs>